Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss another piece of self-destructive Brexit legislation about to make its ill-advised way through Parliament, the retained EU law revocation and reform bill. Basically, your employment and consumer rights, environmental standards and a host of other protections are being obliterated fairly quickly. At least that's the intention but we may well find that this attempt to go full Brexit lunacy meets the same fate as Kwarteng's mini-budget. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, there were three main strands to Brexit for those from within the Tory party who wanted this. There was the shrinking of the states to the point where all that would be left is a police force to keep the local population in line and armed forces to keep everyone else out. This strand is dying now, helped on by Truss's reckless attempts to deliver it quickly, completely ignoring the lesson of the frog in the boiling pot. The second is carving up bits of the country into pirate havens, or investment zones as they call them. Places where the normal standards and taxation laws don't fully apply. These are still very much in progress, but with the RSP being the National Trust raging against the plans, we may well find the Tory voting middle classes mobilised in the front line against this strand. Then the third one, which I'm going to talk about here, deregulation. Billed as an attempt to remove EU laws in their pursuit of this notion of sovereignty, in it, But in reality, they are British laws. And it doesn't matter how you look at them. They are literally British laws because we converted all EU rules into purely uh, UK statutes as part of the Brexit process. It was a very time-consuming and expensive business, but it was done. We did it. Secondly, almost all EU laws and regulations that we adopted as members were either formulated or strongly supported by the UK governments of the time. In other words, well over 90% of what you might call EU legacy rules still in effect in the UK right now were campaigned for by the UK. There was no forcing them onto us. We asked for them. And now the government is passing legislation that means they'll all end on December 31st, 2023. All of it, gone. All your workers' rights, consumer rights, everything. Overnight, gone. Now, it's possible for some ministers to extend the duration of them if they want, but they can only do that until June the 23rd, 2026. That date sounds familiar, it's because it will be 10 years to the day since the Brexit referendum. The symbolism is still all important in Brexit, it seems. Now, regardless of whether or not you may think that maybe some EU regulations are not all that useful, there are three massive reasons still not to do this. The first is the chaos that it will create for businesses. This is a real anti-growth strategy. When new regulations are adopted or repealed, there is often a period of time between them being passed by Parliament and coming into force. It can sometimes be years. This is to allow businesses to adapt. A business needs to be able to plan for years into the future. You've got three, five, even 10 year business plans. For your plan to be viable, you need to know what the trading conditions are going to be in the medium to long term future. And that includes the regulatory framework which you will operate within. What the government is proposing is that reams of regulations, thousands, will suddenly cease to exist in 14 months. It is a bit of a nightmare for businesses because it's too soon to properly plan. It also means that any business that sells its products abroad will need even more paperwork to prove that it isn't taking advantage of the lower regulations. Also, the EU will apply more tariffs to our exports as per the provisions in the Trade and Cooperation Agreement. All perfectly legal, we signed up to it. If we drop regulations, if we drop standards, they up the tariffs. We agreed. If our exports have been hit hard so far, you ain't seen nothing yet. Only it's worse than that. Because the government aren't actually saying all of these regulations are going to be obliterated on the 31st of December 2023. Because that would be ridiculous. As I said, part of the bill allows ministers to extend regulations if they see fit. So now business will be going, OK, so which regulations will be axed in 14 months and which are going to carry on for another two and a half years? I need to know for my plan. For my, you know, I've got to make investment decisions here. They're planning several years in advance, you see. But they won't know, will they? Because ministers won't know. They're going to have to decide which regulations in their department they want to retain and which they want chopped. 
And there are a lot of these regulations and they all have both economic and political implications. So there'll be no decisions at all coming from the government for quite some time. And this is also not going to be helped if the instability in the Tory government means ministers keep getting chopped and changed. No one's going to know what's going on. And some decisions may be made right at the 11th hour, literally. So a business may think a particular regulation is looking like being dropped and all the talk is, oh, the minister's saying, yeah, they're going to drop it, drop it. Then at the end of the next year, suddenly the minister is either changed or they decide, actually, this isn't a good idea, is it? So then they extend it the day before it would otherwise get chopped. The uncertainty is investment poison. But then there's a second reason we need to oppose it, apart from, you know, the fact that it will obliterate what's left of our economy, because it might turn out that almost all of the regulations get extended by ministers who suddenly realise that the scale of the task of going through each one of the thousands they need to assess is just too much. Although if they don't say that very quickly, businesses are going to make those investment decisions. And if they look at it and go, this is too chaotic, we can't invest here, they will just, they will just invest in the Netherlands or Belgium or Ireland or somewhere like that. So that's going to have to come out quickly, and I bet you it doesn't. But look at what their reckless behaviour has done to their poll ratings recently. So can you imagine Tory ministers wanting to risk a similar backlash when they are just a few months away from their intended election date? So let's say they sacrifice a few token regulations, but that they, you know, that some ones that, you know, maybe they judge as either being genuinely problematic. I mean, maybe there's the odd one they don't think is useful or just ones that are of limited damage to the economy. In, and, and they basically extend almost everything else, putting off the problem until after the next election. The legislation still has them all disappearing after June 2026. And these include, you know, for example, the right to paid annual leave. Years ago, many of us tried to warn people that the Tory Brexiteers were after a US style free market where people had basically no employment rights. American workers don't have statutory right to paid leave as we do here. So that would go. In fact, almost all of what you think your employment rights, no, pff, gone. Because they're actually EU rules. In fact, although most members of the public may not appreciate the importance of some of the regulations until it affects their quality of life, that is, there are loads that you can just tell people about and they go, they can instantly see the importance to their life. And you may think, well, surely the Tories would just create their own versions. And yeah, that would be a plan. But new legislation needs parliamentary time and they won't have enough to turn all of the immediately popular ones into new acts of parliament. It took a long time just to all they did so far in, in, in changing them in from EU rules into UK rules is basically rub out the term European Union, replace it with United Kingdom. Basically, what's been done so far is a tipex job. That, just copying, copying them across in time for leaving the EU. And that took ages. It would take way longer to actually create new acts of parliament that basically do the same thing because they'd have to be fully debated. Committees would have to scrutinise them. Ah, oh, it takes ages. There isn't the time. Then there's a third problem. This did not occur to me until I saw it pointed out by a barrister specialising in employment law in an article in the Financial Times recently. Even if the government do chop these regulations, but they bring some of them back in the form of new acts of parliament, just so they can say, well, these are British laws now, even though they already are. They're fairly complex and it wouldn't be clear for some time exactly what rights they give us. The problem with legislation is, you know, it, you'll often find odd little situations where people are like, well, what, how does this law apply then? Well, I'm not sure. So it needs testing in the courts. Basically, someone, for example, if it's employment law, uh, someone will have what they think are their employment rights um, attacked and they will take their employer to court, for example. Or it might be the other way around. But there'll be a court case. Now, you may imagine, well, we understand what they mean. I mean, you know, we, we understand, lawyers understand what they mean now. Judges understand what they mean now. If they're basically the same thing in a new act of parliament, what's the difference? Well, it's because the current regulations have been tested in the courts already with the European Court of Justice being the final arbiter as they are the EU's court, because they're EU rules. So people are generally clear on what they mean now because there have been test cases and judges have explained it all. But new acts would mean new court cases and the judges wouldn't be allowed to refer to ECJ judgments because the Tories are a little bit snowflakey about that. 
So we'd actually need more years of test cases before it could be established in UK law what rights they even give in detail. Even if they were word for word the same legislation as the EU rules. And we may find we have fewer rights because we may find that a UK court comes to a different conclusion to the European court. The best case scenario here is that Liz Truss's reckless behaviour causes more sensible Tories to stop sitting on their hands and actually take charge for once, and that they drop this pointless bill altogether. Or at least amend the crap out of it to the point where it basically does nothing. But remember, in between, right now businesses are looking at it as this removes regulations very, very quickly, and we don't know what's going on. So the sooner they make it clear to businesses that nothing's going to change, the sooner we can actually start to see a bit of investment. But until then, you'll find a lot of it suspended. You know, but that's what we need. You know, best case scenario is it just gets dropped. Second best case scenario, it's amended so it does nothing. Not in 2023, not in 2026. It's just a symbolic piece of legislation that does bog all. It is, after all, an economic, political and legal minefield for the Tories and one that they're not likely to get through unscathed if they're being led by cretins. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.